Greetings in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul. I'd like to welcome you today to the internet broadcast of Albany Family Worship Center. Albany Family Worship Center is located at 3024 Kensington Court here in Albany, Georgia. Our service times are Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study and Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. for morning worship. I hope this message encourages you today and draws you ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a blessed day and always remember this, Jesus loves you. Everybody got their Bibles this morning. I want you to hold them up where I can see them. If you ain't got a Bible, grab a pew Bible. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 4. Book of Mark, chapter 4. And the title of this morning's message is, Who is this? Who is this? As we're going to see in just a minute, the disciples ask this question. And I believe that's a question that's been asked since, since Jesus ascended back into heaven. Who is this? Who is this Jesus? And i got to ask you this morning, who is he to you? What, what, are, what are your priorities concerning your relationship with Jesus? Think about that for a minute now. Is, is, he, is he the one you go to only when you... Got a problem? You know, that's a big problem in the church. The only time we turn to Jesus is when we need something. Is he the one you go to when, when you need a healing? Is that the only time you, you speak to him? Is, is, do you just, just kind of cursory mention his name every now and then? Is it something, is he something, is he someone you just believe in in your mind but not in your heart? Who is this to you? Who is Jesus to you? And I think we need to get that straight today because if we want to see revival, if we want to see an awakening in our life, if we want to have a refreshing not just one time, but every day. Who is Jesus to you? If everybody in the book of Mark say amen. Chapter 4. Well, let's go to verse 35. I'm going to read uh, several verses of Scripture, but I want to concentrate on one verse this morning. So if you would, stand to your feet out of reverence for the reading of the Word of God. Verse 35. And the same day when even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, though it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So saith the word of God today. Father, bless the reading of your word today. Father God, use this living and powerful word to impact our lives today. Holy Spirit, use it to change us and mold us and make us into the men, the women, the boys and girls that you wish us to be. Use this word, Holy Spirit, to convict us of all sin and righteousness in our life and draw us ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father God, I just ask you to be most merciful and gracious to me today. Oh God, that you would forgive me where I failed you, Lord. Forgive me of my sin, my doubt, my hesitation, my shortcomings. Cleanse me, Father, that I may stand before you now above reproach and ask for your mercy and grace. Father God, let your words be my words, your thoughts, my thoughts. 
You'll love it. My heart, Jesus, it flows out and touches everyone under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name we pray and say, we love you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated and give God a hand clap of praise in here today. Amen. Do, do you notice, do you notice verse 41? Well, the disciples asked the question, what manner of man is this? Or as it were, they were saying, who is this? Who is this Jesus? Now listen, they had been with him a while now. They had seen Jesus heal people of sickness. They had seen the dead raised. They had seen demons cast out. They had seen the blind given sight, the deaf made to hear, the mute given speak, and they had seen the lame to walk. But here they are, they're still asking that question, who is this? And I've got to ask you to that today too. Who is Jesus to you? Who is this in your life? Who is he in your life? You know, there's a lot of times we look for a healer, we, we look for a blesser, we, we, we look for a deliverer, but do we actually know who he is? And when we get that straight in our mind, I, I could preach on this all day, but I want to give, give you four little things this morning, if I can, for you to consider and for you to make your mind up about today, who is this? And if you'll allow me, the first thing I'm going to say is this. He is God. Hello? He is God. Yes, he, yes, there's God the Father, yes, there's God the Son, and there's God the Holy Ghost, but Jesus is God. In John 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, was Jesus. And the Word was with God. Listen now. And the Word was God. He is our holy God. He is our just God. He is our creator God. Jesus said in, 850, in John 8, 58, He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. He said, I'm Jehovah. I'm the self-existent one. I am the great I am. I am what you need me to be in the greatest hour of your need. I am God. I am one that said, let there be, and there was. I am the one that hung the sun, the moon, and the stars with just the breath of my mouth. I am the one that called forth the dry land from the waters. I am the one that put all the animals and the plants here. I am the one that formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living being. He said, I am God. Amen? There's no doubt about that. And anyone that denies the Godhood of Jesus Christ is denying themselves. They're denying their salvation. You can't be saved today. You can't be born again today unless you make him God first. See, he must be Lord before he's Savior. Hello. Everybody wants, nobody, look. Nobody wants to go to hell. Nobody wants to be judged nor condemned. Hello. Hello. But before you can have a Savior, you must have a God. Before you can be saved, you must have a Savior. Amen? He must be Lord first. You must be willing to surrender all authority, control, and care to Him. You must be willing to let go of self and let Jesus have control of your life. That's where so many people mess up today. They're not willing to yield. They're not willing to give up. They're not willing to deny self, take up their cross, and follow Jesus daily. Amen? They're willing to make Him God. Because, see, they try to make themselves God. See, when you deny the Godhood of Jesus, you're making yourself God. Am I making sense to you? Say amen. He must be God first. He must be Lord first before he can become Savior. He plainly said, my Father and I are one. We are the same. You can't, you can't make a difference between God the Father and God the Son. They're the same. And since Jesus is God, and God is Jesus, listen, he deserves more than just lip service from us. He 
deserves all our praise. He deserves all our worship today because he alone is holy, just, and righteous. It says in Psalms 29, 2, Give unto the Lord the glory, do his name, worship the Lord and the beauty of his holiness. Do you worship Jesus as God in your life? I'm not talking about just hearing the saints. You know, everybody thinks that worship is supposed to be regulated to just the sanctuary when we gather together. Worship is an everyday thing. Amen? Worship and praise of our great God and King, Jesus Christ, should be a daily thing. We should take time every day to worship. We should take time every day to praise His name. Because it is in the midst of the worship and praise that God shows up and shows out the most in our life. Amen? So let me ask you this. Do you take time to worship your God every day? Do you take a little bit of time just to sit down? I'm talking about cut the TV off. Cut the computer off, throw the phone over in the corner, amen, and just take time to sit down and say, God, here I am. I just want to worship you. I just want to give you a little, you are a good God. You are, you are a great God. You are a wonderful God, and I praise your holy name. I bow down before thee, and I worship you. I give you praise today in the beauty of your holiness, amen. But you know how most you know what most of us do in the mornings. See, I believe I believe you ought to take time in the mornings when your mind is clear, not cluttered with everything that's going on during the day, so you won't be distracted. Take a little bit, give him fifteen minutes. Amen. It ain't gonna hurt you to get up fifteen minutes early. Hello. You know what most of us do? Most of us lay in the bed till just before we're supposed to leave the house. We jump up, brush our teeth, put our clothes on, and run out of the door. And don't even give our God the time of day, let alone worship. Ooh, I got to turn around. Say, well, preacher, you're meddling. No, I'm not. I'm trying to teach you something this morning. Amen. Give God a little bit of, give God a little bit of time. You give time to everything else. Amen. You give time to your job. You give time to your hobbies. You give time to your family. Why can't you give a little bit of time to your God? Who I ain't getting no amens off of this this morning, praise God. But we need to, we need to learn to stop and worship. You want to see God move? You want to see God do something awesome in your life? You begin to worship and praise. Amen. Shut the door and lock up with just him. Come on, son. Does anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? Give God a shout today. You just praise him because he is God. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Amen. He deserves all our praise today. We'll pray. Ooh, I don't want to get started on that this morning. We'll give everything else praise. Except God sometimes. Amen? We just need to stop and worship today. Not only do we serve the righteous, this righteous God, but we serve the living Savior who makes intercession for us daily so that we will not be consumed by our sin. And don't sit there and shake your head and not know that we sin. Amen? Because everybody makes mistakes sometimes. Everybody stumbles and falls. Some people just do it out and out presumptuously. But, God, but Jesus, our God, makes intercession for us daily. He prays for us. He, he thinks about us. Can somebody hear what I'm saying today? Romans 8, 34 says this. Who is he that condemneth? Is it, it is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. For us. We need to praise that holy God who makes intercession for us, who intercedes, who steps in. Listen, I don't know how many times, I wish that we could look into the spiritual and see how many times God steps, on our, steps in on our behalf and rescues us, amen? That steps in and keeps us back from those presumptuous sin. That steps in and puts his hands on us and lifts us above a flood, amen? Can somebody hear what I'm saying? It would open up our eyes 
Woo, come on, somebody. It would open up our eyes and we, it would draw us closer to him. He, we would actually see finally how powerful our God really is. Because we do, do serve a powerful God today. There's nothing in our lives right now that's greater than our God. Amen. There's nothing God can't raise us above. There's nothing God can't take us through. There's nothing that God can't strengthen us over. Amen. Because he is a righteous, holy, powerful, and just God. Can somebody give him praise in the house of God today? Say amen. You got you to, and the next thing you got to remember is this. He's the one who loves you despite all your shortcomings. Thank God for that. Amen. That he loves me even when I'm unlovable. Amen. Now, a lot of times we think about, we think about love. We think about and hugging and kissing and, and giving somebody their way. But that's not, that's not God's love. Amen. God loves you. God cares for you. You hear what I'm saying now? But God loves you enough also to try to get you to do the right thing in your life. Amen? And he proved that great love for us. He proved how much he loves us. It says in Romans 5, 8, but God commanded his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Do you understand that God loves you on purpose today? You're not waiting to be loved. You're not trying to become lovable. God loves you despite yourself. Amen? Despite our shortcomings, despite our doubts, but despite when we don't trust him enough to walk by faith and not by sight. Just to take a blind step and follow him, amen? Walk in his footsteps wherever he leads. We, we don't see that today too much. Even when we doubt God, God still love, God's still there for us. He never, he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Amen. He loves us. God commanded His love. I like that. God commanded His love towards us. He done it on purpose, just because. Hello, just because. Somebody look at your neighbor and said, just because. That ought to have an impact on you today that just because God loves you. That's it. He loves you today. See, God is love. It says in 1 John 4, 16, And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he proved it for, because the Bible says that for God so loved the world. I like that. He so loved me. He so loved you. Hello? Hello? That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him, put all their trust and faith in him, would not perish but have everlasting life. Because, because God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, to condemn you, but that the world through him, that you through him might be saved. Because it's all about the love. Amen? And we ought to respond to that. Amen? See, you can only love this righteous and holy God when you come to realize that he loves you. Do you understand that today? It says in 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loves us. We can't love God till we realize he loves us. Hello? And he, and listen, that is the cause of salvation today. For God so loved the world that God loved you. That's the reason he come up with the plan of salvation long before, long before the world began. In eternity past, you know, I have no trouble with eternity future. Amen? I, I can see it going on and on and on and on. But when I turn around and try to look back at eternity past, wow, that's awesome. And way back then, however far eternity past goes, God loves you. And he loved you so much that he had a plan of salvation to save you. Amen? To forgive you of your sin just because he loves you. And he proved this when he came to this earth to become the sacrifice for our sin. And this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son in the world that we might live through in. Here is not love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Because he loves you today, you should love him. 
Because he loves you today, you should love him. And if you love him, guess what? You will obey him. My children, when I was coming up, they, they obeyed. They obeyed because they knew daddy loved them. They, did, they didn't obey daddy out of fear. They didn't obey daddy because they were scared of the consequence. They obeyed daddy because they loved daddy. And that's the way we ought to be with God. We obey him because we love him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Because, it is, listen, it is advantageous to us when we obey the word of God. God manifests himself in our life. God shows up and shows out in our life when we, when we obey him out of love. Amen. 1 John 14, 21 and 23 says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. See, when we obey, it proves we love God. He it, is, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved to my Father, and I will love him, listen, and will manifest myself to him. I hear so many people, that will, I, I, I wish God would just manifest himself in my life. Are you walking in obedience? Hello? Are you walking in loving faithful obedience to your God and King Jesus Christ. It says in John 23, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I like it when Jesus shows up and shows out. Amen. The next thing you need to know is this. He is the one who gave his life for you. Hello? Hello? He's the one that, that, that died on the cross for the remission of your sin. Titus 2.14 says, Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a particular people, peculiar people. I'm so glad I'm peculiar today. Amen. In more ways than one. Praise God. <coughs> A peculiar, that means there's a, a specific people, a special people, a bought and paid for people. Hello. I'm peculiar today. I hope you are too. A peculiar people, zealous of good works. See, Christ give his life for you on Calvary. He give his life for the world. He give his life for you. But you know what? It is only good when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ. And you were saved. Christ died so you wouldn't have to. It says in Isaiah 53, 10 to 11, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the pressure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquity. See, we couldn't pay the debt we owed God. It was too, it was too, it was too much. It was too hard. We couldn't have done it. It was only the only person that would be adequate for the payment of our sin debt was the sinless Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who shed his perfect blood, his pure blood on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sin, to save us and to redeem us a peculiar people to our God. Can somebody hear me today? Ephesians 1 7 says, In whom we have redemption. There is no redemption in any other. We have redemption in his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. A lot of people don't understand grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor towards an undeserving sin. It's grace that saves us. We're saved by grace through faith. And that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. And it says in the book of Romans chapter 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. If you called upon the name of God today, if you called upon the name of the Lord today, have you received 
your forgiveness, your redemption from the one that died for you. And finally, he's the one that rose from the grave for you. See, the death would have been great. The shedding of the blood was great. The redemption of our sins were great. But what made it all worthwhile is when he rose from that grave on the third day to become the cornerstone of our faith. See, without the resurrection, we would have no proof. You can go to Israel right now, and you can go to the grave of Christ right now, and it's empty. There's nothing there because he rose again. Not only did he give his life, but he took it up again. Amen? He rose the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 4 said, and that he was buried and that he rose again a third day to become according to the Scriptures. He became the very cornerstone we stake our lives on today. His resurrection. And it was proof positive that he is who he says he is. He is God. He is Savior. And we need to get a hold of that this morning. There's so many Christians today that deny the resurrection of Jesus. That deny that he died on that cross. They say, well, he just swooned on the cross, and when they laid him in that tomb, he woke up and walked out. Uh, uh, I ain't figured out yet how, if, if, if he's not God, how did he get through that stone? Amen. He died, and he rose the third day. It says in Acts 4.11, This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none under name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Because of the resurrection, Jesus has become the author and finisher of our faith today. He's become the one that we staked it all on. He is God. Hello? He is God. He is the one, he is the one that give his life for us. And he is the one that loves us despite our shortcomings. He is the one that rose from the grave for us. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Wherefore, seeing all, we also are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, lay aside every weight in the sin which thou so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. What are you looking unto today? What is your priority today concerning Jesus? See, when the disciples asked that question in Mark 4.41, what manner of man is this? They had their doubts. Because Jesus said right before then in verse number 40, why are you so fearful? Let me ask you, church, today, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? How is it that you doubt? If he is who he says he is, if he is who you say he is in your life, why do you doubt? Why do you struggle so much? Listen to me. Because you need to get your priorities in line today. First and foremost, he needs to be your God. Nothing else. Nothing before him. Jesus. He must be God. He said, I am, and he is. He must be the one, listen, he must be the one that you receive all love from. You've got to understand, he, lo he loves you today. Do you get that? He loves you so much that he gave his life for you. He died so you wouldn't have, he died so you could have everlasting life. But then he rose on that third day. To become the very cornerstone of you that you that you put your faith in. And when you stand on that cornerstone, you're unmovable. You're undefeatable. You're unshakable. Because your life becomes all about Jesus. Are you willing to do that today? Are you willing to say, Jesus, you're my God and my King. I give you all authority, control, and care of my life. 
You know, so many of us today, we, we want to get we, we get, we come down to the altar, we say a prayer, and we get up. We've placed all our trust and faith in Jesus, but then we forget he wants all our life and not just some. We try to give him just 99%. We try to keep 1% back. No, he's got to have it all. He's got to be the one in control. He's got to be the one that tells us which way to go and what to do. He must be our God. And let me tell you something, when you surrender, when you yield this way, life becomes so much sweeter. You know, I was such a miserable person before I got saved. You wouldn't have liked me. You wouldn't have wanted to hang around so negative. But when Jesus stepped in, when Jesus saved my soul, things changed. I believe what the Bible says, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Can anybody testify to that this morning? Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Will you make him your God today? Will you make him your king today? Will you make him your savior today? All heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. There's nobody looking around. This is your time with God right now. You might have been holding something back. Well, it's time to let it go right now and give him control. You might have, you might have been still trying to do things your way. Well, now it's time to do things His way. And I guarantee you, it's a change in your life. You may be sitting there today and you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. The day's the day. The day's the day of salvation. The only thing you have to do is say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me a sinner. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Give Him control of your life today and He will save you. These altars are open. Whatever you'll need today, I ask you to stand and to come. Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul again. I hope you enjoyed today's message. It has encouraged and drawn you ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there may be some of you out there today that's made a decision of faith. That is the decision to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it's so simple to do today. The Bible teaches us that if we'll just confess with our mouth and believe in our heart the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you can call upon him right now by saying this simple prayer of faith. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me, a sinner. Right now, Lord, I turn from sin and self, and I turn to you, Jesus, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, I give you all authority, control, and care of my life. Be my Lord and Savior forevermore. I love you, Jesus. Amen. If you just said that prayer, you just become a blood-bought, born-again child of God. And we would love to hear your decision here at Albany Family Worship Center. And here's how you can contact us. You can write us at Albany Family Worship Center, 3024 Kensington Court, Albany, Georgia, 31721. You can send us an email, and our email address is my afwc at gmail.com that's myafwc at gmail.com or you can call us at 229-434-0342 we're looking forward to hearing from you today and we would love for you to come and visit we'd love to meet you and the family have a blessed day and always remember this jesus loves you